just when I discovered the meaning of life, they changed it. One of my favorite things about JavaScript is that the status quo never seems to last very long. React, Angular, and Vue have dominated the mindshare of developers over the last few years. Svelte has been around for a while, but they just released version 3 last week. And my initial experience with it has been very positive, and that's mostly because it empowers you to solve problems with less code. In the first half of this video, we'll cover the basic concepts in Svelte, and in the process, you'll see why it's such an awesome tool. In the second half of the video, we'll build a real-time to-do list with Svelte and Firebase from scratch. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can find the full source code on Fireship.io. Now, before you jump into Svelte, I'd recommend watching this talk from its creator, Rich Harris. That's what really got me excited to start learning Svelte 3. Let's go ahead and just jump right into things. We'll run npx dig it, and then point to the Svelte.js template. This is the equivalent to create React app or ng-new. Go ahead and open it up in VS Code and run npm install. Then you can run npm dev to serve it locally. And that should give you this hello world on localhost 5000. The first thing you'll see is the rollup config.js. This is what bundles your code and it's an alternative to Webpack. Personally, I prefer to use rollup, but you can also use Webpack here if you want. And while we're talking about bundling, there's two things you should know. And that's that Svelte supports server-side rendering as well as native web components or custom elements. So that's cool, but so far this might just look like another JavaScript framework. But if we go into the package JSON, we can see that something's different here. What's missing is dependencies. We only have development dependencies, and that's because Svelte is a compiler. It generates all of your code at build time, which means it doesn't need to include the framework itself as a hard dependency in your JavaScript bundle. Another framework that also does this is Stencil.js, and I feel like this approach makes a lot more sense than the current status quo. And that's because you only need to compile the JavaScript from the framework that you actually need. So you don't have any extra bloat in your JavaScript bundle. What I'm doing right now is just exporting our entire app as a string. And then if we go to the bundled output, you can see that it's just a function that returns a string. So in theory, this should result in smaller bundle sizes, or at least bundles that are optimized for the code that you actually use if you're using tree shakeable libraries. That's what makes Svelte fundamentally different than the status quo, but we've only just hit the tip of the iceberg here. It's also unique in the way that it handles reactivity. If we go into the app component, we'll see a script up here at the top. That's where we keep our main JavaScript logic. And then we have a style tag. All the styles will be scoped to this component. And another cool thing about the compiler is that it will automatically eliminate all of your unused CSS styles from the CSS bundle. And then after that, we have our markup, and Svelte has its own templating syntax for adding logic to your HTML. This is a similar approach to Angular and Vue, but differs from React, which uses JSX. Now, the difference with JSX is that you're taking your HTML and putting it inside of JavaScript and letting the JavaScript handle the logic. This can be a very divisive topic, and it's really just a matter of opinion, but I just find I'm more productive by putting the logic in the HTML like we do with Angular, Vue, and Svelte. Now, if we go up into the script, you'll notice I have export let name. Using the export keyword in front of a variable means that it can be passed down from a parent component. If we leave the export keyword off, it basically means we have a private variable that can only be used inside of this component. Now, the cool thing about Svelte is that it's reactive based on the assignment of a variable. We'll create a variable here for a random number and then create a function that can reassign that variable. So now that we have this function, we need to bind it to an event in the DOM. You can bind to events by doing on colon click or on colon whatever DOM event you want to bind to. This is very similar to all of the frameworks. We pass in the function and it's going to call that function with the event passed as the argument. So that's going to change the random number and then we can show it in the template by wrapping it in braces. Now we have an app that reacts to this randomized button. Whenever we click it, we get a new random number. But what happens if we need to compute a different value from this random number? Let's say if it rounds to one, it'll be a winner. If it rounds to zero, it'll be a loser. The simple solution is just to write that expression directly in the template. And Svelte will rerun this logic every time the reactive value changes. But this isn't going to scale very well because we can't reuse this logic. If we want to show that same value somewhere else in the template, we'd have to duplicate that code. Fortunately, Svelte has a very cool trick up its sleeve for computed values. We'll define a new variable, but instead of using let, we'll use this dollar sign colon syntax. Believe it or not, this is valid vanilla JavaScript, and it's basically just a way to tell Svelte to recalculate this value when the app reacts. Now we can go back into our template and simply reuse the result computed value as many times as we want. Now, speaking of reactivity, another thing we can do is bind to the attributes on DOM elements. For example, if we want to bind to the value attribute on a form input, we can do that with this bind directive and then use our random variable. If we start typing in the form, you'll see how the value itself is recomputed every time we type a new value. Now, currently our computed result is a string, but let's go ahead and change that to a number and then we'll show an entirely different template based on some conditional logic. The new computed value will give us a number between 1 and 100, and we can show a template conditionally by using this if syntax. And we can also throw an else if if we have multiple conditions, and then else for the default value. And then we'll just add some DOM elements in between these conditions. 
and that will recompute the template every time our random number changes. So that's pretty standard stuff, but now I want to show you something that you're not going to find in other frameworks. Let's go ahead and import fade and fly from Svelte Transition. These are directives that will allow you to automatically compute CSS animations based on the logic in your template. So if you want something to fade in and fade out when it's added or removed to the DOM, you can just add this transition fade directive and everything will just happen automatically. But let's say we want our poop emojis to fly in from the right and then fly out to the left. Normally this would take some careful thought about your CSS animations or you might use a JavaScript animation library. But in Svelte we can use the directives to keep the animation logic tied directly to the DOM element that's being animated. And then we can add our own properties to it to customize the way it behaves. And that gives us poop flying all over the screen, which is the effect we're going for. And there's even a directive specifically for SVG graphics that will draw the path along the shape. So that's really awesome stuff, but there's still a couple of other fundamental things that I want to show you before we get to the full demo. Earlier I mentioned that Svelte is reactive based on assignment, so if we have an array and then we push new items to the array, we won't get any actual changes in the DOM. That's because we're just mutating the array and we're not actually reassigning the variable. So if you want the app to react to changes to an array or to an object, it's generally a good idea to use the spread syntax. This code here will do the same thing as array push, but it will also reassign the variable, causing the app to react and update the DOM. Now when working with arrays, you'll probably want to loop over them and display some DOM elements for each item. We can do that by using each, which will give us access to both the value and the index of each item in the array. When we build out our full demo, you'll also see that each loops work with asynchronous values similar to the async pipe in Angular. And speaking of asynchronous values, Svelte has a really cool way of handling promises. I have a helper function here that just creates a delay, and then I'm defining our random value as a promise that resolves to a random number after that delay. When working with promises, there's generally three things that happen. First, you're in some kind of loading state waiting for the promise to resolve, then you get a value, or maybe you get an error and need to show some kind of error message. In Svelte, you can await a promise directly in the template, and this will also handle things like race conditions for you automatically. The first section is where you would put your loading spinner while the promise is being resolved, then you show the actual result, or you catch the error and show an error message. And that provides a very readable and intuitive way to handle promises, in my opinion. It's actually very similar to a future builder in Flutter, if there's any Flutter developers watching at this point. Now we're going to switch gears into Svelte stores, which behave very similar to RxJS observables. And they can be shared anywhere in the component tree, so you have a very easy mechanism for sharing data anywhere in your app. Let's go ahead and create a writable store, and it's very similar to a behavior subject in RxJS, at least in terms of its API. First, we can pass it a default value, and then we can set the value directly by calling set, or we can call update to get access to the current value and then compute a new value in the stream, which we can do with this callback function, which gives us the current value, then we return the next value. And if we just want to listen to the value, we just subscribe to it. But if you've worked with observables, then you know that you need to manage your subscriptions carefully. Otherwise, you could end up with memory leaks. If we go back into our component, the first thing that we'll do is import the random store that we just created. We could subscribe to that directly in the JavaScript, but then we would have to dispose of it once this component is destroyed. That leads to a lot of boilerplate and also a lot of potential for error. But notice how I have this dollar sign in front of the store value itself. This will tell the compiler to automatically subscribe to the value and also manage the subscription automatically. And now we can push new values to the stream from any component anywhere in the app. That will solve a lot of your complex data sharing situations, but you can also just pass props directly between a parent and child component. I went ahead and created a new component called child, and it's just a dumb component that displays some properties. Now we'll go back up to our app component and pass some properties down to this child. Let's imagine we have this data object here that we pulled from a database or something. Now we can go and declare our child component and just pass in each property one by one. But even after just three simple properties, it's starting to become kind of hard to read. But Svelte has yet another little piece of magic that will make this code much nicer. You can simply send all of your props down to the child using the spread syntax. So now that you know some of the basic concepts in Svelte, I want to put everything together into a full working demo. In just a few minutes, we'll be able to build this real-time to-do list that also includes user authentication and even some animation. Once a user is logged in, they'll be able to fill out this form with some information about the to-do. That'll be saved to Firestore, and they can toggle it complete or incomplete or delete it. And of course, everything will stay synced up with the backend database. We'll be using RxFire for this demo, which you can install with the following command. The first thing we'll do is create a file called Firebase.js, just used to initialize Firebase, and you'll need to use the credentials from your own Firebase project. We'll be going through this code very quickly, so make sure to follow along with the source code on Fireship.io. But basically the purpose of this file is just to initialize the app and then export auth and the Firestore database so we can use them in other files. From there we'll go into the app component and we just have a few small changes to make here. We'll import this login component which we'll create next. 
And with Svelte, you'll notice that there's no index HTML that you can mess with. So instead, what you can do is use this Svelte colon head tag to add additional things to the head of the document. In this demo, I'm using the Bulma CSS framework just so we have some better base styles to work with. After that, we'll build our auth feature so the user has a way to log in. I'm creating a profile component, which will just be a dumb presentational component to show the user's display name, photo URL, and user ID. And another cool side note here is that Svelte will automatically warn you for accessibility issues. For example, if we leave out the alt attribute, it's going to warn us to add one. You can also do this in ESLint, but it's nice to just have this stuff working right out of the gate. After that, we can create the login component, which is the smart component that does the actual interaction with Firebase. Now the interesting thing about Svelte is that the shape of the stores are similar to the shape of RxJS observables. So that means we can use some of that syntactic sugar on RxJS observables in addition to Svelte stores. Currently I'm grabbing the auth state observable from RxFire and just subscribing to it manually, but we'll refactor this in a minute. And I'll also define a function here to trigger the pop-up that will allow the user to log in with Google. And that will cause the value of the auth state observable to change. Now we can go down to the template and create an if else statement. And if we have a user logged in, we'll go ahead and display that user profile component. And of course use that spread syntax to pass the props down. And if the user is not logged in, we'll just show a button that can trigger that login function. At this point, we have a fully working auth system, but we can actually refactor this a little bit to use some of Svelte's built-in syntactic sugar. This time we'll define the user as the observable itself, and then we'll just go ahead and use that dollar sign syntax to unwrap the observable directly in the template. That'll work inside the if condition and also works inside the spread syntax. And now we have a login component that will manage our subscription automatically with almost no boilerplate. Now it's time to move on to the to-do list. Each of the individual to-do items will be represented by this dumb component called to-do item. But instead of just displaying data, it's also going to emit custom events up to the parent component. So this is a way to pass data from a child component back up to the parent. And in this case, we're doing that so we can tell the parent component when to remove the item from the database or when to update the status in the database. Svelte has a thing called an event dispatcher, which will create a custom event in the DOM for you. In this case, when we want to remove an item, we'll dispatch an event called remove with that item's ID in the database. And then we'll do a similar thing to toggle the status of a to-do item, but this time we'll pass the ID as well as the new status that the item should change to. Now I'm defining a CSS class that will show when an item is complete. And I'm going to make sure that that class name is the same of the property that toggles that class, which is the Boolean value of complete on this component. And we might as well just add a transition to this item when it's created so it kind of slides in from the right. And we can easily do that by simply using Svelte's transition directive. From there, we can go ahead and add the text inside the list item. And when it's complete, we want to show that CSS class. Svelte has a built-in class directive, which we can use like this by pointing it to the complete property. But if the CSS class and the property both share the same name, which they do in this case, we can actually make this even more concise like so. Now, the last thing we'll do in this component is create our buttons that will dispatch the custom events. We have three different buttons here. Two of those are used to toggle the status and the other one is used to remove the item. And now we're ready to move on to the final component of this app, which is the to-dos list. I'm not going to talk too much about the Firebase code. Basically, we're just making a reference to the collection in the database and then making a query for all of the to-do items that are associated with the logged in user's user ID. Then we're going to use the collection data function from RxFire, which takes that query and converts it to an observable of the document data. But in order to work with an each loop in Svelte, we'll also want to pipe in start with, and that will guarantee that the observable always has a synchronous array to start with. From there, we'll define the update status method, which will take the custom event that's being emitted by the child component and use it to make an update to the Firestore database. And then we'll do the same basic thing to handle the remove event. Now, if we go down to the template, we'll set up an each loop and notice that I put a dollar sign in front of the to-dos observable. This will unwrap the observable automatically, manage the subscription, and then react to any new changes, whether they happen client side or on the server. Then we can pass our props down to the to-do item component, and then we can also listen to the custom events that we defined on that component as well. So instead of just doing a simple on click event here, we're doing on remove and on toggle. Again, those are custom events defined in the child component. And then the very last thing we'll do is set up a form input using the bind value directive, and then set up a button that will add that item to the database when clicked. And that's all there is to it. We now have a reactive real-time to-do app. Overall, I've been super impressed with Svelte. The only thing that I think is missing at this point is TypeScript support. But from what I understand, there should be TypeScript support in the near future. I think what impresses me the most about Svelte is that the abstractions are really well thought out, but they don't take you too far away from vanilla JavaScript or native DOM APIs. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. Let me know what you think about Svelte in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.